Tutorial 15. Abstractions Introduction In this tutorial, we will extend the concept of encapsulation to include abstraction the ability to have subpatcher logic live in a separate, reusable file that you can then use inside of any patcher you like. Once saved outside as a separate file, abstractions can be modified to use arguments to make a generic max patch useful to your specific application. By using abstractions for your most used programming tasks, you will be able to reuse that logic in future projects without any duplication of work. Abstractions are key to supporting your accumulated max knowledge and experience. The abstraction mechanism can make your subpatches look and act like built-in max objects and can also accept arguments to further tune its functionality. An overview in our tutorial patcher, you will see that there are three different patches. In this case, each of them do the exact same thing, but at different levels of abstraction. The first section is the fully visible patch. If you turn on the metro with the toggle, we see that the patch tracks your cursor around the screen and draws a scaled version of your mouse movements in the LCD display. We make use of the bucket object in this patch. A simple example of the object is shown on the left next to the LCD. In its most simple form, upon receiving a value, bucket always puts out the last value it received. This makes it useful as a single event delay object, which we use in the main patcher to construct line segment messages that link the current position of the mouse to its previous position. In the case of section one, we have a lot of logic on the screen and it might be useful to encapsulate it into a subpatcher. However, the patcher logic that pulls the mouse and scales it based on the size of our screen looks like something that could be useful elsewhere. It would be interesting to have it available for other patches without having to copy and paste from one patch to the next. This is where abstractions come into play. An abstraction is a subpatcher that is saved as an external file and can be used just like a standard max object. As long as your abstraction can be found in the max file path, you can type its name into a new object box and it will be loaded directly into your patch. The abstractions used in this tutorial are in the same folder as the patcher accessing them. A library of abstractions can easily be created by placing them in a folder inside the patches folder of your max installation or anywhere else max looks for files. Using a simple abstraction, the second section of our patch shows an abstraction at work. Turn off the metro for section 1, hit the space bar and turn on the metro for section 2. You will see that the program works exactly as it did before. The object, called Thwidem, is actually an abstraction of the scaling logic from section 1. If you double-click on the Thwidem abstraction, a new patcher window will display the contents of this abstraction. Notice that this looks very much like an encapsulation with one exception you cannot unlock the window to edit the contents. This is because Thwidem exists as a separate patcher file living in the same folder as our tutorial patch. Abstractions are meant to be shared among several patches, so you would not want to edit the contents in one patcher, since this might break its functionality in other patchers. If you do want to edit an abstraction, you need to open the abstraction file itself. While there are several ways to open the abstraction file, we'll mention only two. We can open a new file browser and type Thwidem into to the search window and then double-click on the patcher file that appears in response to our query, or we can click the Modify Read-Only icon in the Abstraction toolbar. However you choose to do it, open the Thwidem source file. You will again see the abstraction contents, but now you can edit the logic. If you change something and save the file, all patchers that use this abstraction will reflect the changes even if the patcher is currently loaded. You can see this in action by adding a second inlet to the Thwidem abstraction and saving it. The instant that Max sees a new version of the abstraction, it reloads it and adds a new inlet to the Thwidem abstraction in your tutorial patch. While we have the Thwidem patch open, let's look at the documentation that has been added to the inlet and outlet objects. If you open the inspector for the inlet, you see that there are several different types of built-in documentation. The first is called annotation. Any text placed in the annotation field will show up in the clue window when you hover over the object. Text placed in the second documentation field, the hint field, will display in the hint balloon when you hover over the inlet object in a lock patcher. Finally, text placed in the comment section doesn't display in the patcher. Rather, this text is shown as the assistance text when you hover over the inlet of the object in the higher level patcher. 
it is wise to document your inlet and outlet objects and often use abstractions since it can provide simple but effective documentation for your reusable logic using an abstraction with replaceable arguments in our thwitum abstraction there is no logic that needs to know about the higher level patcher However, what if we wanted the abstraction to properly scale the output based on our LCD object's size? In this case, we would have to inform the abstraction of the LCD display size, which we can do using arguments to the abstraction. Section 3 of the tutorial patch is similar to Section 2, but the abstraction used is called Thwitum Scaled, and includes two arguments that represent the horizontal and vertical sizes of the LCD object. If we open and unlock the Thwitum scaled dot max bat patch, we see something very interesting. The multiplication factors use number one and number two as placeholders for values to be provided as arguments. As you might expect, number one is replaced with the value of the first argument, while number two is replaced with the value of the second. The use of these replaceable values is key to making abstractions that are flexible and reusable. If you would have 319 and 239. Hard-coded into the abstraction, you could only use 320 by 240 LCD objects to display the mouse movements. On the other hand, if you force the top-level patcher to perform the final scaling, you are forcing the top-level patch to duplicate work that could be easily abstracted into the lower-level patch. By using replaceable values in your abstractions, it makes the high-level patcher as simple as is practical. Summary by saving your logic in an abstraction, you can create modules that can be used in future work with little or no additional programming. This allows you to parlay your max knowledge into more efficient work in the future and will help you create programming systems that are modular and easier to maintain.